Now, before we get started, you'll probably be very glad to know that this video is not sponsored by some VPN provider. I'm not gonna be trying to tell you about this amazing new VPN software that can save you from hackers. Whereas in actual fact, what people wanna do is watch Netflix from the US when they're in Europe or something like that. I'm not gonna try and tell you about some amazing VPN software that you need to pay for. The software that I'm talking about in this video is free. I'm gonna talk about two pieces of software. First one is the Brave web browser replacement for your current web browser. And I'm then gonna talk about Pi-hole, which allows you to implement a network-wide ad blocker. So you don't just block ads on an individual device, you can block ads on all the devices in your network by using black holing of advertising domains and tracking domains. I'm gonna show you two things in this video. I'm gonna show you my favorite web browser, which is the Brave web browser. It blocks ads, it forces HTTPS upgrades. You don't have to install any additional software to get this capability. It's using Chrome under the hood, but is a browser that's optimized for privacy. Now it doesn't just automatically block ads. It also supports another feature that I like. And let me just say this again before I continue. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being sponsored to say any of this stuff. This is just something that I like. Under File, I can select New Private Window with Tor. I really like this. It has Tor built into it. I'll do a search for what is my IP address. What you'll also notice is it's not using Google by default. It's using DuckDuckGo. I'm told that my IP address is unavailable on DuckDuckGo, but let's go to this website. What is my IP address.com? Now you will encounter this kind of stuff, which is frustrating because I'm using Tor, but the idea is, is that I have privacy now when I surf the internet. So according to this, I'm actually in Germany. So that's the breakout for my Tor browser. If I just do that in my normal browser window, I'm in the UK, my ISP is BT. But according to this, I'm in Germany. So I really like that, having Tor built in. I don't need to download and install a separate browser just to get anonymous browsing on the internet. It uses Chrome under the hood once again, so that's great. A lot of the functionality that you may be used to with Chrome still works. A lot of the extensions work with Brave. Brave allows you to block ads directly within a browser, but Pi-hole takes us to the next level because it allows me to block all ads for all devices in my network. So I don't have to install Brave on a phone. I can simply use my normal Safari web browser and it will block the ads automatically. It does that for all the devices in my home network as an example. So Pi-hole is fantastic software. This just shows you how ridiculous the internet's got in the last 24 hours. 15 and a half thousand queries have been made. 2,362 were blocked. So 15% of domains were blocked. 124,000 domains are being blocked by Pi-hole. Now please note what I'm gonna say in this video is my opinion based on my experience. Don't be offended if you like certain websites that I don't, it's just my opinion based on my experience and how I hate ads. I'll now show you the difference using the internet, going to some websites without Pi-hole and then with Pi-hole. You can install Brave as an additional browser on your phone. So I like Brave when I am traveling, but uh, Pi-hole is fantastic. Really happy with the performance of what it's doing on all the devices in my home network. So I'll just go to a local website, Oxford News. So oxfordmail.co.uk. Now, because I'm in Europe, well, perhaps just for a few more days here in the UK, we get this pop-up. So if I wanna opt out of all these crazy cookies, I have to unselect all these options and then select save and exit. But notice I've already got an ad at the top. Here's another ad, another one. Don't particularly wanna to go to McDonald's, but seems like McDonald's is very popular. 
I'm not looking for a new job, but they think I am. I'm sure you've experienced this yourself. You go to a website, you just get ads after ads after ads, pop-ups, all the rest of it. I mean, scrolling down here, all of these promoted stories are just adverts. So I'm not really interested in most of this stuff. But obviously they think it's something of importance to me. Lots and lots of ads and it just carries on for a long time. Okay, that's terrible. Let's go to another website, which I never go to, but let's go to yahoo.com, US website, but I'll probably get the UK version. So once again, I have to manage my options. And notice this, to try and opt out of these ads is almost impossible. It's some ridiculous convoluted way to get out of the ads. So to try and go to Yahoo on an iPhone is kind of impossible. So I end up having to select OK. And then it's just ridiculous ads. And then I'm getting tracked because I've now opted in to be tracked and I'm getting lots and lots of ads. So I'm kind of tired of that. So let's go to my settings, go to my DNS configuration. And what I'll do is remove Google as my DNS server. And I'm gonna add the Pi whole server as my DNS server. Now, typically you're gonna make this change on your DHCP server. So you're gonna point your DHCP server to Pi-hole and that's then going to check the DNS queries and block or black hole DNS queries to advertising websites. I overrode that here and manually configured the DNS server. So let's try that again. I'll go to Oxford Mail. What you'll notice is the ad has been removed at the top. And as I scroll down, all the ads have been stripped out. I don't see any ads. I'll go to the first article again. Notice at the end of this article, I don't see all the ads anymore. All the ads have been simply removed. I've had issues using the Brave browser on a phone. It allows you to set a whole bunch of security options, but some websites don't work. I mean, the Yahoo website is awful in my opinion. This solves those problems. So Pi-hole really makes things a lot better. Now you could run this on a Raspberry Pi. That's where the name comes from, Raspberry Pi plus DNS black holing. I'm not doing that. I'm simply running this on a virtual machine. So I've installed it on a Ubuntu virtual machine running within VirtualBox, running on a Windows computer. I was doing this as a test, very happy with the software at the moment. I'll probably move this to a VMware server or perhaps to a bare metal server, but it's running great within this Ubuntu VM. Now, before we continue, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. I upload a whole bunch of technical videos on this channel. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's look at the installation of the software. Brave is really easy, so I won't demonstrate that. You simply download it and you install it like you would any other type of application. So install it as an executable on Windows or install it as a DMG file on your Mac. Very simple installation. It's also available once again in the App Store for iPhone. So just do your normal installation like you would any other application on those operating systems. Pi-hole has made the installation very simple. Click on install and that will take you to GitHub. On GitHub, we are simply going to copy this command. That's the easiest way to get the software installed. I'll go onto my Ubuntu virtual machine and I'll open up a terminal. Before I install the software, I'm gonna type sudo apt update to update references. My references are updated and I'm simply gonna paste the command in we told that we need to install curl, so I'm going to do that by copying sudo apt install curl. That's now been installed. I'll clear the screen and then I'll try and install Pi-hole again. We can see that some checks have been done. It's making sure that it's running as root, making sure that it's got disk space. 
It's then installing the packages. They've made it really easy to install the software. There's only a few menu options that you have to go through. We told that this installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. That's what we want. So press enter. We can donate if we want to, press enter. Now it needs a static IP address. So in the next section, you can choose to use your current network settings or manually enter them. You should configure your device to use a static IP address. So either manually configure that on the virtual machine or the Raspberry Pi, and then exclude that IP address from the DHCP server, or make sure that you allocate the same IP address every time to the Raspberry Pi or virtual machine. Personally, as they suggest here, I would configure the IP address manually. Okay, select your upstream DNS provider. I'm gonna simply select Google. Really, you can just go through all the defaults if you like. That's basically what I'm gonna do. It says that Pi-hole relies on third-party lists. You can either accept this or unselect some of them. I'm gonna go with the defaults and press enter. Which protocols do we wanna block? IP version four, IP version six, or both? I'm gonna block both, press enter. Now, do you wanna use the current network settings as a static IP address? The software is intelligent enough to go and set the IP address manually. That's fine for this demonstration, so I'm going to do that, but what I would suggest you do is configure the virtual machine first with a static IP address or your Raspberry Pi, and then just use that IP address. So press enter. Now we're told that there could be a conflict. We need to manually exclude this address or add it to the reservation pool so that it's always allocated to this device. So that's fine for this demonstration. Press enter. Do you wanna use the web interface? I would say yes, it's recommended and that makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. Here's the web interface on a live system that I'm using. So I'm gonna press enter. Do we wish to install the web server? Yes, we do, press enter. Do you wanna log queries? Yes. What do you wanna log? You can hide information if you like. This is my home network, so I wanna see everything. So I'm gonna press enter. The software is now installed. So it, it's really quite easy. You answer some basic questions. I've gone with the defaults and the software is now installed. And once that's done, we'll see what our password is to log in through the web browser. So all you need to do now really is wait for the installation to complete. Okay, there you go. So we told this is our IP address. Notice the password, it's important that you remember this. You can get to the web interface by using this or this IP address. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of this so I keep that information. So there's my screenshot or screen grab if you prefer. I'll go back to my browser and I'll connect to the IP address forward slash admin. And there you go. I can see that I've now got access to the server. I need to log in using the password that I was previously given. And there you go, I've now installed Pi-hole on this new virtual machine. Now I'll go back to the live one. This is the live one that's running my local network. One thing you need to remember to do is set up your DHCP server to point the DNS to your Pi-hole. So in my example, I've got a Cisco router. I'll log in, show run pipe begin DHCP. So on this DHCP pool, and that's the one that I'm using for my internal network, the DNS server is gonna be the Pi-hole server. Now this is CLI, it's a Cisco router. If you've got a home router, you need to use that interface to change your DHCP settings. In this example, I've got a BT Home Hub, which is a British telecom router, very common in the UK. And I'll go to advanced settings, go to IP addresses. 
And here's a problem. This device is not allowing me to set up the DNS server information. So you may have to manually configure your devices to point to the Pi Hole server. This is one of the problems with some of these home devices. They don't have the features that you would get on an enterprise device. But again, on my Cisco router, I've adjusted the DHCP pool to point to the Pi Hole server. Now, Pi Hole supports multiple operating systems. It supports Raspberry Pi, it supports Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, and CentOS. So you need a Linux distribution, but quite a few options are available if you want to set this up. Okay, so that was quite a long video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you did, please like this video. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I want to wish you all the very best.